All right, well, let's get stuck into it. So what I wanted to do today is discuss the carnivore diet. And one thing that has really, I've got a beef with, pun intended, and that is not necessarily people who are on the carnivore diet, but it's the thing that there's certain people out there and it's becoming a growing movement saying that veggies are actually bad for you and the only thing you should be eating is meat. Now, I've, I've got a beef with the veggies, veggies are bad for you thing. I think that's bad messaging. It gets under my skin. I don't like it. So what I've done is I've invited a good friend of mine along. Come in, Kate. This is Kate the Primer. You better not watch that because that's a delay. <laughs> Kate, yeah, so stand right there, yep, about yep. there. Beautiful. Kate is um, a good friend of ours, but she also happens to be a dietitian with 30 years experience in the game. Not only that, she's quite famous. She's a TV personality. I've been on TV a lot, giving her wisdom to the TV people out there. And now she's hitting the YouTubes with me. Fantastic. Yeah, so um, you've also written plenty of books. Yep. And uh, I thought I would get you in to help me because I'm not a dietitian. Mm -hmm. um, I speak from the heart when it comes to, you know, I'm passionate about veggies, as you know. 100%. Um, and uh, it was getting underneath my skin. I talked to Kate and she said, I can come out and give some advice and, and, and some uh, go through a few things with you if you want. And I said, that's just sensational. So mm. here we are, Kate. Yeah. Look, do you know, Mark, I loved when, I've known you for years. I've known you for years. We've traveled, we've, we've, we've picked tomatoes off vines. We've looked at eggplants that are lovely and purple. And you know, how can veggies be bad for you? I've actually sort of, with 31 years experience, I've been talking veggies all my life. You know, veggies are the, pretty much the first food for kids. I mean, that's what they eat. Yeah. Um, so again, I'm like you, everyone has, has an opinion and everyone has the right to do what they like with their body. But it is really dangerous to start sending messages about veggies being bad. Um, like veggies, mother nature put bright colors, bright flavors, you know, texture, I mean, I'm of Italian descent, which food is love, and vegetables make up 50% of Italians' diets. You know, the Mediterranean diet is vegetables, and mm. I can sort of pull stats out of, you know, everywhere to basically back up that veggies are, are great. So I think that's why I had a bit of a passion as well yep. when you said, God damn, my people are saying veggies are bad. Mm. They're not. And I yeah. think we've just got to send that message out because people get confused. And they say, God, what's what's next around the corner? Yeah, and, and in your 30 years experience, you would have come across all sorts of different diets. Hey? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A bird just missed you then. A bird dropping. Right. Well, is that good luck? That's meant to be really good luck. Drop right here. <laughs> okay. All right. See? Thank God. Thank God. And if it was halfway down my face, that's actually okay. So the bird's trying to say something see, too. Just, it just reminds me of. I, I just quickly, you know, my arm. I can't feel anything on that because yeah. it's um, it's a skin graft and everything. Yeah. And it's really bad nerve damage. I was um, giving a talk once, and I was walking through the, the mall, and a bird must have done a dropping on my arm, and I didn't feel it. Anyway, I've been through all the talk and everything, an hour, and then someone come up to me and said, what's that big, yucky, white thing on your arm? And it was a big bird and dropping. A big bird <laughs> dropping. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was exactly. that. Well, it's Sorry meant to be that. good luck, yes. Yeah. So look, yeah. I mean, the diets for 30 years, there's always going to be sort of like a rehash. And look, I love meat. I love meat. My family loves meat, so meat, chicken, fish, good proteins. I think the balance, you know, we've just, we've gone through the paleo, we've gone through the keto. You know, these things keep getting rehashed. Years ago, it used to be the Atkins. So I think people look for um, a lot of things about dieting that motivates my clients is the, the yearning to lose weight. Yep. And so obviously when you cut out whole food groups, you know, there is a little bit of weight loss there. But, you know, food is 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 my passion. It's love. It's kind of, um, it's it's sitting around a table and enjoying the tastes and, and really just that connectivity. Now, you're an old school dietitian. Yeah. That well, it, it, and, and not me not being a dietitian, I just mm. feel like it's common sense yeah. that we um, enjoy food. Mm. Uh, but for a lot of people, food becomes the enemy and it shouldn't be like that. I think we were meant to enjoy and savour uh, beautiful food. Mm. Um, and veggies is so much a big part of that. Think yes. about all those um, eggplant uh, preserves and um, cheeses and the way we've created all these things with the food that we grow mm. um, and fermenting foods to make a different taste of pickle and that yep. 
uh, and also the, the gut fermentation, the gut bacteria. There's all these things that we've evolved over, like maybe hundreds of thousands of years as mm. humans, that we've picked up and that um, it, it's so many things point towards them being good for us. Mm. Now, I quickly want to say I'm not poo-pooing those on the carnivore diet. Uh, if that's working for you and you swear by it, that's good. That's mm. cool. I know Jordan Peterson is on it. Mm. His daughter's on it. They're very famous, but they also don't say, they don't recommend it to people, especially Jordan Peterson. He said several times, I wouldn't recommend this diet. But if you're going to do it for yourself and everything, that's fine. What I've got a beef with is people saying that veggies are bad. Yeah. That's and what I've got to keep reiterating. Yeah. That's my problem. And I've, like, after I, we spoke, I went down various rabbit holes of research trying to find something that had some sort of clout and there is nothing. There is nothing. There is nothing because it just, yeah. it, it's veggies, look I think people just need to, if they take something home from this sort of discussion that we're having today is it's okay to continue with your veggies and salad and your fruits because if it makes you feel good, I know I feel good when I'm eating lots of veggies and lots yep. of salad, I tell people to, it helps your bowels go. I mean we're meant to pass something like a couple of litres of gas a day, you know, really? we're, meant, we're meant to fart. A couple of litres? Yeah. To, to, to I'd probably do about five at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure all those teachers out there are going, yep, I smell it every single day. But that means your bowel's moving really well. It also, they have protective things too. So we live in, you know, um, sort of closed uh, environments where there's lots of car fumes and there's, you know, spraying hairsprays and perfumes and, and medications and things. We've got to have some protection from within. And that's like veggies, we know that there are very various powers within veggies and salad and fruits that have protective antioxidants, phytonutrients, etc. I know, I just, I don't want to be that boring dietitian that comes in and people yeah. go, oh God, what a boring person to listen to. So it's meant to be fun and, you know, I kind of, my background is, you know, I've come from an Italian family, I married a Sicilian chef. So, you know, and he just, he Paul. loves food. Yeah, yeah Paul. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, good chef. Very good. <laughs> he, he cooks on your, your fishing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can cook fish. <laughs> but, you know, it's balance. Yeah. And there's nothing nicer than, especially with, with young children, we're, we're trying to sort of promote veggies and salad with, with youngsters as well because, God, they're filling up on a lot of, like, sugary crap these days. So, you know, there you go. Um, oh, all right. So... Speaking of veggies, we've got spinach behind you. It's going to seed. So mm -hmm. I thought today, over this next, you know, 50 minutes, we would walk around and just visit a couple of places in the garden mm -hmm. because this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do some sort of podcasty type things outdoors mm. um, and also move around and just show people the garden because of, obviously people really like having a look and seeing what's going on right now. Mm. Um, it's just a different thing to the structured video, videos that I do. Mm. So behind us, we've got spinach. <clears throat> it's going to seed, this was a baby spinach. It's doing really well. And there's the seed there. Everything's going to seed, which is really good and a little bit unusual because often you'll see that it's starting to die off here often it won't get the chance to go to seed because English spinach is a pretty timid thing. When, when our spring, late spring and summer hits, it starts to die off and, mm. and it'll die before it gets a chance to seed. I planted this earlier. I planted it really early, right at the start of, well, before winter. And I babied it in through the, the hot autumn and then uh, it had enough time to grow and go to seed and I'm going to get seed out of this now rather than just a dead crop. Um, yeah, you get feed through through the winter time but if you plant it a little earlier in our region or in the subtropics in general, I think you can get some seed out of it rather than it failing before it does. And then of course you can plant that next season. Had a really good season of, of, of spinach. Um, Mm. But from a dietitian point of view, how's spinach? Well, do you know, like, well, it was first discovered in 1930s and... Um, 1930s. By, in 19... First? Oh, that's pretty early. Yeah, yeah. And they, the, I think it was... Did um, you want to put a hat on? Um, I'll get a hat in a minute. Like, okay. I know, it's pretty I, fun I, these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, I know you brought one. I don't want to have a hat, but you can. I know. Look, my yeah. husband never wears a hat either. Uh, look, mm. you know, he'll probably be in a cancer ward or something. <laughs> but... Um, so it was, they thought it was a weed, but then people who were just eating kind of a lot more vegetable sort of stuff, their iron was actually quite good. So I looked up, if you look at 100 grams of raw spinach and 100 grams of mince, 
there's actually more iron. It's not as absorptive as the iron that's found in the meat. Yep. But so it's a pretty good iron rich um, vegetable, so which is fantastic. A- Theoretically, there's more iron in the same amount of spinach in which, the raw stuff. So, like, yeah. so I could hold like a hundred yeah. grams of spinach in a yeah. huge bowl here, which and you a little probably bit. wouldn't eat. No, yeah. but but it's still a good thing. So you'd fart a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, spinach is a very low fermentable. Oh, so I go. see. So you won't fart. See, you won't fart. <laughs> so I see a lot of people who have gut issues, and I get their fibre up, and then I take some of the fermentables away, and they get some sort of relief. But spinach is one that I really throw in there a lot. Yeah. But um, the Another fun fact about spinach, in um, Popeye was credited with an increase in the sales of spinach in f- for 30% increase in the depressive years. The cartoon. The cartoon, Popeye. Like, you know, Popeye. Hey, and olive. Olive. <laughs> olive. <laughs> well, yeah. Popeye. There you go. Yeah. Well, well, they're starting to decrease. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with age. So, they talk, that's, that's basically back to the iron as well again. And you, look, you can eat the baby raw spinach. But spinach is better if you actually cook it because you release more of the nutrients. And again, it's high in antioxidants. It's high in phytonutrients. So again, and God, there is nothing nicer than a spinach pie or spinach and feta phyllo. So it is such a versatile um, vegetable. But do you actually, so if I was to take a cutting of that, what would I do to kind of, you know, grow that yeah. on my little, <laughs> so we're very different. Yeah. I'm. I'm kind of a bit more inner city with no use, usable kind of land. So I've got a lot of pots and things in, in my place. But how would I grow a beautiful bit of spinach? Because we use it a lot. Well, wait till these seeds dry off mm-hmm. and fully develop, and I'll give you some of the seed. Yep. Um, you wouldn't want to try to start it now, even in the balcony garden. You could try it. Mm-hmm. It might be mild enough in the city there to be able to get a summer crop of spinach in. I doubt yep. it. It would grow pretty tough, still reckon. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I, yeah, wait till it goes to see the cutting, it'll die on you. Mm-hmm. It, 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 we won't be able to grow up very well, I don't think. Yeah. Um, unless we were in season, it, it might get a, grow legs and, you know, be able to do that through winter. Yep. But even then, you're still better off sowing seeds or getting some punnets mm-hmm. uh, from your local uh, grow, uh, nursery. Mm-hmm. You know, you can get them from the markets. I think it's now $1.50. Yeah. I think for 10 or something, yeah. 10 seedlings. Oh, oh, good. Too yes. easy. Exactly. And it, yeah. look, it's cheap. And I think that's the, the good thing about veggies and salad. Again, it is a very inexpensive part of your plate. And we're looking at, you know, I mean, there is so much food insecurity around the world, but even sort of like here in Australia, there are people battling. I've got clients who sort of, they will go without a meal to feed their children. And so I'm trying oh, to yeah, find yeah. really good stuff to sort of put on the plate. And the cost it, of living. The cost of living is yeah. high, but, uh, you know, an, an omelette or a frittata or some sort of like crustless quiche with spinach through it, you know, a parent's going to feel, oh, at least I've actually provided some sort of nourishment for my, my children yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And you can fit a lot in in a small space. Yep you know pick and come again you can't keep up well this is a i did it in half a garden bed this is a fairly large bed though Mm -hmm. you know you're looking at a meter point point one point two meters or three and a half feet across Mm -hmm. and and say another three feet that way in uh, which is a lot of speech we could not keep up with it Mm -hmm. Um, but we did do a lot of freeze drying and um uh, fermenting and all that type of thing and had it as much as we could mm. so I reckon a small type of container mm. like a 40 centimeter pot would be fine for a family of four having yeah. spinach every third night or something yeah and yeah. you know because it's about 90 percent water it goes beautifully in like smoothies like if you can blend things up like if you've got some sort of blending sort of capacity yeah. throwing that in there sort of with a banana and spinach like especially for those kind of fussy people, and it's not just children; it's adults, teens, tweens, etc. And my elderly, you can um, whiz it up as as a, an addition or an ingredient in your smoothie because yep. it's ninety percent water and it mixes beautifully. Makes yep. it go a bit green, but that's okay. okay so I love cool. it. Yeah, so it's a, it's it's such a versatile thing. So how can this be bad for you, Mark? I know, I know. How can it be bad for you? Yeah. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about, um, and I've read a lot about it and heard about it, is like my analogy is speaking of Italians, mm-hmm. they'll often eat um, a salad, uh, a, a, like a vinaigrette salad, um, plenty of endive, those types of things, um, throughout a meal and at the end of a meal mm. to help them with digestion, like big pastas and big beef dishes and mm-hmm. that. Is there any truth to that? Does eating veggies um, 
like help with the with digestion or with other foods? Look, I guess things like protein and fiber and veggies are really high in fiber. Um, they basically kind of sit in the stomach and your stomach sort of for up to four hours to kind of um, digest, which means you get a lot more production of like acid in your stomach. So mm. sort of acid and digestion, that, that helps the whole process. And then you've got emptying as well. But it's also like a palate cleanser too. I think a lot of times you'll get things in between. So yeah, the, the, the Italians and sometimes like, you know, the Japanese, they'll use some sort of root vegetable or some, some pickle or something between the different meals to kind of cleanse the palate freshen it up, give you something to chew so that, because pasta can be, I mean, it's beautiful, but it can be a bit stodgy after a while yeah. and you just have something Yucky. crisp. I like, like, you know, bring back the crunch. Yeah. That's what it is. Like, yeah. I'm trying to get that, that crunch and, and those sort of things in. So yeah, look, there is, there's nothing wrong with, with including that in, you know, um, a breakfast, a lunch, a dinner or a snack in between or in between sort of some of your meals, your main parts of your meals. And for gut health, mm. um, you're saying, you know, eating fermentables. Yes. Um, like, it's important, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, and, and the, the, the thing about gut bacteria now, more research being done, mm. saying that actually can not control your mind, but it can send messages to you about eating better foods. And it can also, bad bacteria can send messages like eat more sugar. Mm. and that we have to kind of fight and balance that out. It's all about inflammation. There's, you know, this is kind of a, look, I don't know how far, you know, in the States and the UK, but here in Australia, we're still, we're still finding our feet with a lot of look, looking at the gut and the brain. It's called the gut-brain axis. This is when oh, it gets a bit more science. Gut-brain axis. axis. So you've got kind of, um, if the gut is very inflamed, and so that's things like Crohn's and colitis, and people sort of come to me and say, look, I've been diagnosed with irritable bowel. Irritable bowel is not a bad thing. It's just a, a, a group you get put into when, when the gastroenterologist has no idea what's causing a bit of a rumbling gut or you know, a bit of diarrhea or a bit of constipation. So there are certain things that are fermentables and like, you know, your artichokes, as you call yeah. it, fartichokes. Fartichokes, like Jerusalem artichoke. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean that that isn't a bad thing. That's yeah. they they're good stuff because it, it's making your bacteria work and ferment in your gut. But I've got some people who've got really sensitive yes. gut, and if they've got a sensitive gut, I kind of pull these things out and move them a bit around, and then and then challenge them afterwards. So, yeah. look, we need a healthy gut. If your gut is inflamed, it tends to give people brain fog. They tend to come to me and say, "Look, I'm just I'm feeling really cruddy." I'm tired, I go to sleep, you know, in the middle of the day, I don't have any energy, I feel nauseous, you know, is it, is it my gut? And so yeah. we can kind of do a, a little bit of moving foods around, but you know, gut ferment, like fermentation in your gut is, is a good thing for those who can cope with it. Right, okay, yeah. cool. Well, let me just check, make sure this feed is going all right. I keep looking back, so I'm not being rude. I'm, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm one I'm man good. show here, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just make sure that the feed is running okay. I love it. I love um, it. And we will answer some questions as well. I'll have a quick look at the uh, at the questions just to see if there's That's any. Wrong, but look at us, fifty year olds yeah. with our glasses. Oh no, I know. <laughs> so you got to go here. Uh, but look, you know. Okay, uh, Diego says virtually none of the Blue Zone Centarians are pure carnivore or pure vegetarian. Diego, I love you. Yeah. I absolutely love you. I, the Blue Zones is a book that I've read. I have read this from cover to cover. These people are octogenarians. They're centurion, like they're, they're or whatever, they're hundred. They, it's not if they're going to reach 100 years of age, when they reach 100 years of age. This is the Okinawans. There's a group in Sardinia. There's a group in um, uh, California. I bet they're sort of, I think they're Seventh-day Adventists. Oh. Um, and 95% of their intake is plant food. Right. But they still like, you know, the Sardinians still have a little bit of goat. Sardines? We still, yeah, fish. Do they eat sardines in Sardinia? Oh, I don't know, a little bit, I can better check that. <laughs> How's my Italian background <laughs> knowledge? But you know, they also have a little bit of red wine. The, the Japanese Okinawans have a little bit of like sake. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's the balance and it's not about cutting whole foods out, but I try and mimic the blue zones. And just for those, any Australians who are actually watching or listening, the closest blue zone that we have in Australia is Bondi. Bondi Beach. No. It is because they are 
plant, like a lot of plant based. You know, it's not just what you eat, it's also your connectivity. The hippies, the hippies at Bondi. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I don't know. But you know, it, they wake up and they do an hour, like, you know, it's it's exercise, uh, yeah. it's like yoga or, it's or something. It's that mix. It's that mix. It's so, it's, it's, it's not overindulgence. It's, mm. yeah, it's like the old saying, um, in moderation, isn't it? In moderation. It? And these blue yeah. zones, guess what they do, Marky? 100% of them in Okinawa, this little city, they grow their own veggies. Oh, they? they all, 100%. Well, there you it's go. not just like, you know, so 50%. they're getting that, they're oh. e eating that, but they're also exercising just naturally through yep. that. And 100%. that's probably got something to do with it. Yes. And the well-being, the feeling good of being out in the garden. Mental health is like stress kills little birds and stuff and animals. Yep. Yep. Of course, it would be affecting us. So mm. the less stress we can sort of have, mm. the better. 100%. I mean, but yep. you know, as humans, life is hard and mm. you go through lots of stress. Yes. So the best way to do it is to manage it as best we can. And I found getting in the garden one of those ways. I gave a talk uh, last weekend to... Um, uh, the veterans um, yes. at uh, the RSL markets up at Yandina. Mm -hmm. And g'day to all those guys, by the way, if you're watching this or watching it back later. Um, it was really good fun. Yeah. Really, really good fun. I put together a, a pot of um, different types of veggies with the hero plant was a chili. Oh. Um, just what you can grow in one 50 centimetre pot. Yep. But anyway, um, I talked a little bit about mental health there and so many of them were nodding away and grinning because they just understood like people with PTSD, people who have um, got lo lost limbs and got some problems, uh, they get out in the garden and it's just one way with mm. the nature side of things, nature, exercise yep. and satisfaction is what I said, three things really help them out. Mm. Yeah. And there's nothing nicer, like I've planted <coughs> A couple of weeks ago just some of my citrus trees I go out there every morning and just a tiny little new growth of a leaf or a new bud of fruit is is it's exciting it's like you know it's the cycle it's the new new growth watering it's therapeutic yeah that's yeah, what it, it is. is it's just yeah. getting back to kind of basics we our lives are running too fast yeah yeah slowing life down a little bit slow yeah one, exactly yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you, Diego. <laughs> I did see a question on perpetual spinach. Yes, yes it does grow in Queensland, and it, it will grow all year round, as long as you baby a bit, give it plenty of water through summer, maybe a bit of shade cloth over. Oh, we've got a low-flying aircraft. It's better than a low-flying bird. Go yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll take the chance to move to a new location. Hopefully this works. My testing shows that it does, So, but this is live. We'll move and hopefully don't lose you guys. So there might be a little bit of a disruption as I do this. So am I meeting you at the blueberries? Yeah, meet me at the blueberries, right. please. And I'll have a drink of water too. Now I've got you by the waist. I know, for all those um, dermatologists out there, I have actually got my hat on now. Okay, cool. So you go on that side, Kate. All right. At about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's fine there. And I'll set up my thingy over here. God, look at these. You don't mind if I pick one? No. That is fantastic. These, these go up to... I've probably the worst I've seen is eleven ninety nine a punnet. Really? And that's like one hundred and seventy five grams. So I'm not sure how to turn that into um, ounces. But like they are so expensive out of season. Yeah. To, to pick one off, you know, a, a bush like it's just beautiful. You'll notice the tape. Uh, have we still got everyone? Um, let me get my glasses. Give me a thumbs up if you can. If, you, if we're still going, it says live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be okay, I think. Okay, yeah. All right. I'll have a bit of a drink. I've been a bit sick. I don't know if you've seen some of my feeds and that. I got the, I got this strain of flu that wasn't A, B or C. Because I've actually yeah. did get the jab for the flu. Mm -hmm. It wasn't A, B or C. It wasn't COVID. Um, but uh, whatever it was, the doctor said it was one of these other ones. Well, I didn't get 
try to get tested because it was pointless, but it gave me a really heavy chest and I lost my voice. Mm. So content is down a little bit because of that, um, but uh, I'm, I'm on the mend now. And um, speaking of that, would blueberries help me? I was going to say, like, you know, you can't, well, we can't tie a very tight, like, you know, ribbon to blueberries will actually cure your cold. But again, they are very, very high in antioxidant level. So antioxidants helps with your immune system. Um, so they can't hurt, is what I'm saying. Yes. And they are the only only plant food that is has natural blue color so you know throwing them in pikelets pancakes um, muffins scrolls anything it just gives that beautiful blue hue so and, did you say that that was the only fruit that is blue it's the only it's the only it's the only plant food that has the natural blue color that I have found now look, look correct me if I'm wrong that is. Oh, no, it's a fat blueberry. like that's as big as a big marble that that is absolutely beautiful just beautiful and look feel how they are very very mm. taut mm. now because very of the tight. height very tight, mm. very tight. and mm. do you know how long it takes to freeze these um two hours not four minutes four, four. minutes to freeze them because they're high water content have you tested that well I've, I've put them in my gin oh my gin and tonic and do you know what they move around i don't know how they do if anyone out there is kind of an engineer and sort of says how how do they keep moving around inside your gin and tonic or is it just the actual bubbles from the tonic water? They just they keep, keep They keep moving. Mm, that's nice. Mm, very pretty. Next question. Mm -hmm. Would that make your gin and tonic healthier? Well, you... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say yes, because it's got a fruit in it. There oh, you go. Uh, yep, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> everything in moderation. But it is, it's just a... But it, gosh, it's a lovely... It is such a lovely fruit. I find you can actually... These... Anything that's like little, a little handheld, this is great for little kids to start because, you know, it's dry to the touch. It doesn't make a lot of, like a lot of kids can be a little bit sensory and the fruit flavour, like the, it's very hard for a child to eat watermelon because it looks solid, but as soon as they bite, it turns into a huge amount of water and they gag. Oh. Whereas a little blueberry is very sort of, it's taut. It's like small. a little lolly. It's like a little lolly. And yeah. so when they bite, they can control around their mouth. So it's oh. a great, it is a great little fruit for kids. Wow. Oh, all of us. Yeah. Which is fantastic. So and before I about... met you, I didn't know, I didn't know that it was this easy to grow blueberries. But you said something to me about like the acidity, which... Yeah, yeah. But what I found was initially like 10 years ago, I tried growing them in the garden like normal fruit trees and my soil just wasn't good enough. I tried pine needles, I tried making the soil a little bit more acidic. They like a more acidic soil like azaleas. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kept on failing. So I ended up putting an azalea mix down and giving a bit of buffering in the mic with this wind coming across. It's better than what I've got hooked up there, but um, that I had to pull out. That was earlier in the stream. If you're not, if you're just new to the stream, I tried because of the wind, I tried using a, a better microphone that had a wind sock on it, but unfortunately that made it quite quiet, but this is better anyway. But so um, apologies if that's buffering, but um, what was I saying? You were saying the, um, the, oh, yeah, acidic. Mix, the acidity. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we, we put an azalea mix in here, at, at least at the start, and then you can top it up with an azalea mix if the bed sinks a bit. But what I'm saying is you're better off growing it in containers where you can control the soil or the potting mix and they'll grow a lot better for you. Give it some good trace elements every now and again. Um, there are regions of course where these will grow like crazy and you won't have to worry about it but certain places people find it quite difficult to grow blueberries. Um, but if you use that mix or you use this type of growing method and I've got several different plants in here to improve cross pollination and also just have slightly different berries. And the other thing you'll notice is, and I was such a skeptic of this, see this tape, this is an anti-reflective, anti-bird tape. And there's no way you would get these berries get to full size um, without this tape. Uh, you can see I've got this frame, I used to have to net it over, but then that stops the bees and pollinating insects coming in. Mm. So what I did was I've just left this frame on here and I tried some of this bird tape, anti-bird tape, and it actually works. It's only about $2 a roll and it works so well. And as you can see, 
the berries remain in place, get to full size, and we can pick them at our leisure. And you have thousands. There are there are literally thousands of berries. Yeah, growing. all all. And and the other good thing about home mm. is, and when you're growing different varieties, is that you have them ripening at different stages. So you mm. can get a punnet, you know, every every week um, for months mm. as they develop at different times. Mm. And you know, a lot of people say to me, we talk in terms of food chemicals. The fact that I can just come in here and just pick straight off your like the, the bush here and eat because you know of your lack of using sort of like yeah. really bad chemicals and things. Yeah. But Mother Nature has put natural food chemicals in plants and a lot of people say to me, are they good? Are they bad? They're, oh. they're natural and like you've got salicylates, amines, glutamates. These this are is of, the yeah. other thing I've heard with the carnivore yeah. argument. So and is that what you're getting to? This is where okay, I'm going, I'll let you, yes. I'll let you go. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I mean natural food chemicals so when you've got your little blueberry that's green like that, it is not enticing to an insect, a bird, an animal to come and eat it because it's not ready. So for its life cycle in the wild, it needs to look like this lovely blue one. You know, I'm just I'm just using that to pick this so that I can eat it all the time. <laughs> so to get to that colour, that is when it's ripe. Now when a bird or an animal or an insect eats this and then poops somewhere, then the bush can regrow but it's not gonna be here. So that natural chemical in there, be, these are kind of what they call high in salicylates. And salicylates is a natural aspirin. So there's a very toxic kind of taste for birds and things in that. So they go, right, well, it's not ready to be eat. Whereas this is fine. Only probably about 2% of the population have a chemical sensitivity and that might be like a, a histamine response. But we, we work it out, but it's exactly like people who are egg allergic or nut allergic or seafood not everybody is we find out who it is and we can manage that so natural food chemicals are absolutely fine right so again that's another thing that you know that i is? was reading and people were getting a bit, yeah. there's a lot of confusion yeah there. so that's the confusion mm. so and people some people some nefarious people are twisting this yeah. and saying that that's reason why you shouldn't eat veggies is because they are deliberately trying to kill you mm. and there was one of the titles i saw in a video on youtube yep. was your veggies are trying to kill you mm. um oh. i mean that type of inflammatory stuff is is not helpful at all to the average person who's just trying to learn online exactly but again if you read some of these like I've, i went and had a bit of a look at those kind of some of the sites which were a little bit bizarre and they're saying just think about it from the veggies perspective it's growing it can't move it can't run away so it has to actually provide something that it's toxic to kill you. Oh my God, I'm not chasing my carrots down. <laughs> I mean, you know, and I'm not trying to be blase about this, but we've got to look back to kind of the science and being realistic. Yeah. So then, any questions? There's a lot of talk about um, the blueberries and how to grow them. Oh, good. Uh, oh, I'm keen, I'm super keen. Because I love like, you know, when we've talked before about things, it's grow what you like there's no point i know you're not a big fan of no what are you, what are you not a big fan of brussels sprouts, brussels sprouts oh, yeah. i'll have to turn that around Mikey. I really will. <laughs> it's, they're beautiful like if you actually barbecue them with a little tiny bit of like a tiny bit of soy sauce and a little bit of bacon oh my god they are beautiful and i know it's covering yeah, a little the bit soy of the, sauce and the bacon yeah, sounds good it's, it's lovely <laughs> but that yes. they're, that's really popular at the moment having a side of like some you know roasted or fried brussels sprouts so i will i know I'll they're making a resurgence the are. old brussels sprouts i've seen it popping up in my mm. seeds all over the place but there's no point you growing them at the moment because yeah. they would just go to seed whereas you're growing something yes you're correct that yeah. you know your boys will eat you eat you know Nana yeah. eats. And, and the brussels that's sprouts that's actually that's true in um literally mm. because brus well they, yeah they do go to the seed they need a good I reckon four or five months mm. of cool weather growing. Oh. So in the subtropical climate, growing Brussels sprouts is or kale, brew kale is mm. a cross between kale and Brussels sprouts, oh, cool. which would make even some people that hate kale even <laughs> more <laughs> put off. I actually like it. kale, but but anyway, mm. you can't you can't grow them here because by the time you know you plant them early, say like spinach, mm. like I was saying before, plant it as early as you can. It just gets too hot. By the time they're starting to to bud, mm. they they're buggered and they get uh, torn to shreds by caterpillar moth and yeah. all that, um, and then they just shrivel. 
which you're happy about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've at least said I've, I've tried to grow it. Exactly. You're honest, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, grow what you like or grow what you really will use all the time. There's lots of comments that people are talking between themselves. Um, Mandy's plugging our forum a lot, which is good. Thanks, Mandy. <laughs> um, know your climate, know your soil. Yeah, so there's lots of really good comments in the comment section. Yeah. No real major questions. That's um, good. Yeah, 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 it's good. That's because your explanations are so good. Well, at least I don't think I'm a knob. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say knob oh, online. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> sorry. A nerd. That's it, like, like a dietetic nerd. But, you know, I love it. I'm passionate about it. Here's something off the cuff. Speaking of blueberries and eating them. Oh, no, you were talking about the... Did you mention anything about the covering of these blueberries? Like, See, it's got that mould or something like that white stuff. It's a protective. Again, it's a protective. Did you mention that? I did mention it, but I'm oh. not quite sure why it's there. It's, it's, is it for the fruit itself? Do you have to... It's like a fur. Oh. It's their protective fur. So I don't know whether that also allows it to get to oh, its growing Oh, maybe fruition. from insects. From an insect, but it doesn't yeah. hurt us, like, no. you know. Yeah. But you'll see when you buy... I'll have to look that up. Yeah, when, yeah. when you buy blueberries, they're like washed. from a fruit shop, they are washed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and okay. that's washed off. Yes, but, and they're know, more blue. And they're more blue, yeah, yeah. yes. Probably looks better. Well, yeah. if they're darker, yeah, so, yeah. you know, for your, your drinks. So yeah. they're, they're, they're actually, well, they are classed in inverted commas as the healthiest fruit out there. So. Right per bite, per unit, what they actually provide to the body in. And I keep saying antioxidants. We live in a world where, you know, we've got cars, trains, trucks, helicopters, planes, etc. Antibiotics, yeah. um, cigarette smoke, you know, yeah. people vaping, all of that sort of stuff. So the body is bombarded yeah. and oxidation is when there's certain oh. things inside your body. I won't get too sciencey and nerdy yeah. on you, but yeah. they split, and then that goes and attacks membranes and attacks skin, it attacks organs, mm. yeah. and antioxidants bind those up, and then you can kind of you know evacuate them through your body. So that's what an antioxidant is. So that's a great explanation. Mm. So oxygen breaks and it becomes an oxidative particle, and it then attacks. Right. So then an antioxidant binds and out. That's Could a very yeah, basic. Yeah, so yeah. If there's a few more like highbrow scientists watching this, I apologise if I've actually sort of not completely um, explained it. But that's how I explain it to clients, and that's why we do need to eat like fruits, vegetables, salads because they're high in antioxidants. Right. And also lots of olive oils, like you know, a good olive oil, like extra virgin olive oil, is you know high in antioxidants. So uh, I'll put you on the spot. This is going to be a bit hard to explain, but. Mm -hmm. When I was crook and I'd lost my voice, I made up a concoction. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I got half a lemon, mm -hmm. one orange, mm -hmm. um, a handful of spinach, one green chili. It was a hot one. Yep. A, a speaking of knobs, a knob of ginger. Yep. A knob about that big, two inches of turmeric. Turmeric. Um, and some of their own honey. Yep. About two tablespoons. Yep, that's your raw honey. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, raw honey without not processed or heat processed yep. or anything. I blended all that up and drank it. It actually tastes quite nice. How would that go? Would that help me at all? Yep. Or you just, just mentioned feel... so many, like, so, you know, your turmeric yeah. with it's a big um, question. anti inflammatories, yeah. your ginger yeah. is an anti nauseant, um, oh. honey has got antibiotic properties. You've, it's all lubricated because you're all inflamed yeah, in your throat. Yeah. Your spinach was iron, your vitamin C coming from your lemons and your oranges. So it was a tonic. You could sell that. You could buy, you know, put it and sell it. Who wants to buy my tonic? <laughs> <laughs> well, did, your, did it actually make you feel like better? And, it pepped me up. Yeah. And yeah. your chili is a vaso, it's a vasodilator. So like, you know, when you have chili and you start to swear yes. things. So that kind of maybe brings things to the surface, uh, yeah. you know, and like yeah. increases your heart rate. And you would have been a maniac on that. Well, um, yeah, uh, it, it did pick me up. Yeah, it did pick me up, and I've had not quite the same concoction, but I've had a few since. Well, my, um, my grandmother used to give us lemon and um, yeah, so it was squeeze of lemon and honey in hot water if we were unwell. Yeah, and my grandfather, he drove himself at ninety six to the hospital where he died about four days later. Really? So he was 96, he was still driving, 
he like had a garden, not as exquisite as yours, but we would always eat out of his garden. We would always help him, you know, so they were the motivators in my life, but we would, he would always pick his lemons, squeeze them. We didn't have raw honey, but we just had honey and it was absolutely beautiful. And so, and it, it kept us well. So, you yeah, know, there's yeah. gotta be something in there and there's yeah. things that we, we haven't discovered yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well, let's um, move to our third location. Mm -hmm. I think that's um, at least we didn't lose anyone here. Oh, we'll lose the stream, mm -hmm. and we'll move over to our beans, and we'll have a chat there. It's mm -hmm. it's in the middle of the the garden there, so it's a quite toit. So we'll try to do our best. Yep. But, you um, just tell me where to stand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll move the camera first, mm -hmm. and I'll put you in location, and I'll bring this other gear up. Beautiful. You have I'll a drink. Yeah, go yep. and have a drink. I've got you, I've got you by the arm. There's the water here. See, the garden's so big. Let me stand in the corner. Um, well, about Around there, the about here. That's beautiful. Do you know, we were, Marky, we were given senses, five senses for a reason. Yeah. Smell, touch, taste. Gosh, beautiful. I love coming here. I just raid his garden. I don't know. Some people are going to say, why are you eating a bean raw? They're beautiful. What do you do with all your mint? Make mojitos. Make mojitos. Just tell me when and where <laughs> and we're there. <laughs> do you need a hand? No, no, it should be right. Yeah, that wind's buffering. That's the only thing that's annoying me, is the wind. Beautiful beans. That's right. This is, this is the time of the year here in Australia in spring. It does get a bit windy. That's probably good to blow pollen and bits and pieces around too. Yeah, but it's not good for the mic though. No. So coming here? Yeah, about there, Kate. Yep. Yeah, or anywhere you've got quite a bit of room. Where the beans are. Yeah, we can pick a handful of beans. Mm -hmm. If you want to. Alright. What are the difference between your green beans and these yellow beans? It's a French um, yellow bean, they don't really taste a lot different. Some people say these butter beans are, are a little bit tenderer and nicer. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, personal choice. I like to grow a bunch of different varieties. Do you know what I love? The purple dwarf. These are all dwarf beans in this bed here. And uh, it's really easy. Some simple couple of mil trellising, only about a foot and a half high. I used a bit of twine, tied up around let the beans grow naturally up and then they flop over and uh, it's perfect. It's an easy way to, to trellis things. Do you know what I love about beans in the vegetable world? They're really robust. Robust in, in what way? Just to cook. So they, they stand up to like stir frying. So you can be quite you know, vigorous in your stir frying, you can um, tempura them. Like a lot of, like the Japanese, they love to tempura beans, which means they don't collapse. Like if you actually, some vegetables that are very, very um, delicate in their skin will just, they, it just goes to mush, whereas these stay really, really um, firm. Mm. So you can chop them and put them into risottos. You can, they're great. I used to, I used to put an olive on the top and make them like a vegetable lollipop. 
that's when I was trying to kind of pull the wool over the eyes of my children. <laughs> and they did, they loved them. What I wanted to ask you about beans was, um, what about protein? So beans are more into the little bean inside. They are higher protein than, say, your spinach and, say, especially lettuce, etc. So, you know, people say to me, oh, but aren't beans and things higher in calories? There's, we've got to be kind of define the word bean. These are green beans, like, you know, runner beans and, and um, French beans, as opposed to beans that some cultures call legumes. Yes. So legumes, which is chickpeas with kidney beans, etc. These green beans are not as high in protein as those, um, and white butter beans and things, but they do have more protein. So I think 10 of these beans is about 30 calories, one to two grams of protein, and one to two grams of fiber. Okay. So, and again, antioxidants. And like these beans here, you can eat, I mean, I know some people might freak out and say you can't eat green beans, you have to cook them. These ones here, you can eat fresh like this, it's, mm. that's no problem. But there are certain beans, uh, I think it's lima, lima beans. There, and other beans that need to be cooked. So yes. of course, you know, look out for that and make sure that you just don't eat a raw bean that has, what would it, has it? I think, that, is it lectins or something? Like something, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, I can't remember. It, it, they're like a lima bean, yeah, you've got to cook those things. I mean, I wouldn't eat a raw, um, like a chickpea or a raw lentil, like they've got to be cooked, whereas these are, technically a vegetable, whereas those things that we're talking about, the chickpeas, lima beans, red kidney beans, bolotti beans, cannellini beans, they're great in stir-fry soups, etc. and they're yeah. a really good protein yeah. and a fantastic meat alternative for vegetarians, yeah. vegans, etc. Oh, for vegans. Yeah, whereas these are more in the vegetable. So, you know, the little bean there yeah. um, is not like <clears throat> your... So that one there, yeah. it's... Yeah, that's sort of... It's a very small... It doesn't have Small, the same. Soft, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have the same properties as, say, like a chickpea. Yeah. So that's why I mean I can eat these ones, and you know I am not going to die. But you can call me tonight and make sure that I'm I'm still standing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will. I'll check with Paul. Make sure hey, that Paul, you're um, okay. You're yeah. not double over. Double over. And have a right <laughs> yeah. Accident, emergency, <clears throat> and I go. Whoops. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. Just check. Mm. These are. These are a purple one. They're, they're, they're a little bit bigger, a little bit taller than the French bean. But um, very cute, very nice. You can try one and see if, if there's any difference if you want. These are a little tougher. But sweeter. Mm, a bit sweeter. Mm, mm. They're beautiful. They look, I mean, they would look nice in a salad. But just, you know, again, the brighter the colour, there's got to be more nutrients in more colour. Mm. That's, it, it, that's kind of a rule of thumb. So I'm going to can most of these, canning them and cooking them up, putting them in, in jars, uh, pressure canning. Um, does that change change the nutrition at all? Like, if, uh, like if you stir fried these, just warm them up, like mm -hmm. you're having a Chinese stir fry, Asian stir fry, is that better for you than boiling them up? Or generally, you know? quick. High heat, quick cooking is going to be the best for you. So right. a quick stir fry for those who are okay with microwaves, a quick microwave, steaming, you know, get that, that water absolutely boiling and put it above a steamer. And that would be the best because you just, you're not breaking things down. Once you start cutting into vegetables, when you cut into the cells, you start to leach out some of the vitamins and minerals in there as well. So um, canning, because, because these things are so robust, putting them into a can and then like, you, do you heat them up or do you do some sort of... Yeah, you, you super, well, you, you pressure can them, yeah. so you super heat them. Yep. Um, and it, it's over 120 degrees Celsius, I think. Right. Okay. Um, but I suppose you could, I mean, you could cook with the juice mm. as yeah. well. So if the juice has got a color in it, it's probably got a little bit of like yeah. nutrients that have leached out into there. Yeah. But you know, we've got to, we can't all just eat them straight off the vine. No. We've got and, to be realistic. You, you've got to preserve, like you can't, like there's too many to eat. Yes. Like there's buckets of, of oh, just in this small area, there's literally buckets mm. of beans. And I've got to pick them probably today or tomorrow and can them up and nice and fresh, mm -hmm. maybe freeze dry some of them, whatever, blanch them, freeze them. You know, there's sort of lots of ways to, to mm. do beans. Um, but the, the thing is, uh, there's only so many you can just left, leave on the plant and have regrow them next year, you know, let them dry out and then go to seed and regrow them next year. It's just a waste if you don't at least preserve them somehow, because mm. you can't eat them all. No, 
I mean, would, you know, that's a devastating fact. Like, you know, they've yeah. just got so many and yeah. things do go to waste. But um, fresh off the vine, number one, freezing them, like just basically giving them a quick wash and freezing them. Um, then probably canning them would be best and then chopping them up and then using them in some sort of sauce. So like a, a veggie sauce with them all finely chopped in there, it still will have good fibre and good, some probably the minerals more than the vitamins. There's a little bit of degradation because vitamin, especially vitamin C, it's very, um, uh, like it gets destroyed by um, sun, by light, by cutting and by heat. So, but you know, I mean, that's why Mother Nature put vitamin C in lemons and oranges and limes and things. So, yep. you know, they've all got their place. Yeah. And like we're hovering over mint here, is there any good qualities of mint just off the cuff? Um, it's meant to be like it's a repellent, like not even nutritionally, but it's a repellent for you know you can actually put it on you. Oh, well, it didn't help with the horse fly. There was a horse fly flying around here. <laughs> I saw that. Did you see me hit myself? I yeah. Never, I well, actually then... think I bruised my chest. Oh, go on. <laughs> oh, you didn't hit it on me. Well, that's good. If it's at you, it's not on me. So that's good. So. I mean, it's just, mint is such a beautiful, um, again, it's the senses I was talking about. It's that sense of smell. Anything like those Vietnamese rice paper rolls, oh, yeah. there's got to be something. It, it stimulates saliva flow, you know, and it's just, it looks really pretty. I think when you when people say, I oh, don't put, you know, veggies and salad on my plate, I think, what does your plate look like? It won't, it, it mustn't look really enticing. I just, I think a, a plate with like bright red, um, cherry tomatoes and mint and purple beans and things it just looks enticing yeah, yeah. you know what we say eat the rainbow yeah that's it so you were talking about vegans before <laughs> i'm wondering like this would be a conundrum what if a vegan wanted to to go on the carnival diet because of the health reasons then then might pee me out <laughs> you're they, losing me <laughs> yeah they went they went they they ate plant-based meat foods right would that work but then or it's would that be a, would it's that a, be a conundrum that's a <laughs> they're on you not me um well if a vegan wants to eat a carnival diet they're a flexitarian to start with oh so is there such a thing oh bloody hell i thought i was being smart no. <laughs> i thought i was going to corner you no i was being really cheeky <laughs> no oh. <laughs> back at you oh. so it's a flexitarian but if it is like you know if um like they're called mycoprotein and mycoprotein which is like from fungi and things so it looks like meat but it's actually a plant protein so it's still vegan so there i mean and it will still have fiber it'll have iron it'll have so there'll be a little bit more vegetable matter yeah. in there as well yeah but, but so whole, it's technically possible then it's technically possible but of, most of the vegans i know the vegetarians yeah. i know and you know again, and nothing wrong with that no, you do you yeah and yeah. i'm a dietitian yeah. there to yeah. help not yeah. to actually you know be yeah. opinionated so yeah. i've just balanced whatever i've got in front of me and yeah. a good vegan and a good vegetarian diet can be just as good as a good oh, yeah. um, balanced you know carnivorous plus vegetable but diet. you have to be smart of that don't you you do because you, yeah. yeah as you say we've evolved and and i don't want to get to i'm 55 now and i don't want to get to 75 and start breaking some of my bones because i haven't looked after the calcium in my yeah, bones yeah. and things so yeah. you know i just look i if there's experts out there that say, look, this is what we need to do, you know, listen to the experts. Yeah. But back to your vegan vegetarian moving to the carnivore, but in a vegan way. I think most vegetarians and vegans love plant-based foods. So they, they'd miss those beautiful colors on their plate right. and the opposing uh, yeah. textures and flavors and things. Yeah. So that is a good point have. we probably haven't talked a lot about is that variety. Mm. We didn't, we maybe touched on it at the beginning, but that's such a good point, isn't it? Imagine just having that one steak for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Mm. Oh, you'd get sick of that. It tastes I mean, fatigue. Uh, hats off to some people who can do it. Yeah. Um, but that is real mind power. Yeah. I could not do that. And look, anything, like if you've got any of those diets out there, and like you were saying before, like that zealot or that extreme. Yeah. Like, you know, people lose weight if they cut out whole groups of things because they just stop eating so many calories. And, and maybe they don't like eating. Yes. They, they start, ended up like, oh, bugger this. Yeah. Um, I'm on this diet and yep. I can't be bothered eating that tonight. Yep. Yeah. And what happens, look, just again, science alert, sorry people, um, when you cut out all vegetables, all fruits, all grains, all legumes, and you're just eating plain meat, 
your body does go into what they call gluconeogenesis, which is actually using fat and protein as a as a, 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 a product for fuel. So it turns into like the glucogenic gluconeogenic pathway produces glucose. So people do lose weight, but God, at the expense of so much else, like you know, muscle wasting, um, nutrient deficiencies, and and a lot of people. They just don't have the stamina to do that. Yeah. It's like saying, I want to start exercising, but I'm going to do an Ironman this weekend. Oh. You know, yeah. you, you just, you, you got to, you know, be realistic yeah. and work up to things. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, what we'll do now is I think we'll ask, like, if any of you guys got some questions, especially for Kate, fire away now, and I'll read the questions out. Um, and because you know we won't go much more over the hour so we'll have about 10 minutes of questions and while we're waiting for that to come in there was a comment there someone said that they they dry spinach out and they put it into a powder yeah. i'm assuming um that if you don't like like kale or spinach maybe brussels sprouts yeah um you could powder them up and then put them in a, in a drink, yeah. mix it with a, a shake or something, yep. and then you're getting those nutrients. You're still getting your, you, yeah. you, you're, you're getting some minerals, especially the, the um, iron, and you're also still getting some fiber, and you're getting some chlorophyll, like the, the green. So all these things are green. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Mr. Miyagi. Um, yeah, so I, I love how people have kind of, you know, pivoted away from just using the fresh and going for more, you know, I love lining underneath, you know, like a chicken dish or a beef dish or even sort of like some um, legumes or fish and putting your kale or your spinach or your baby spinach um, or your cabbage underneath and you're cooking it. And, and so when the little parts are sort of like just peering out from the meat, they tend to kind of crisp up and you've got that lovely chip type, you know, that, that crunchy. But it just gives it a lovely, a lovely flavour and you can wrap, you know, especially with um, spinach and things, you can wrap the meat in there and... Or, you know stuff it into a chicken with some ricotta cheese I mean yeah. you can see I keep going back to Italian eating. lettuce uh, with uh, yes mm. as the wrapping the chicken the wrapping. yeah um, Sharon has said what's your ideal food garden what's my ideal food yeah. garden yeah. okay so I think look if I had the, the real my ideal garden would be a couple of high vitamin C so that would be a tomato like a tomato a um, lemon, lime and orange, which I have just planted on my back deck because we've only got a very, very small space. Um, I would definitely plant some sort of legume. So if I could get, um, you know, some sort of chickpea or you know, something that would give me some protein as well. I love the spinach and the kale is, is a, a, a great one. Eggplant, if you can do eggplants because they tend to be the little cases that you can put sort of mince with some um, rice in with a little bit of cheese over the top and make like little pots of, of, of eggplant. And then I'm trying to capture ones with very high fiber and lots of color. And and things that I like to eat, the fruits, I love those blueberries. You saw I probably had seven, eight of them in a 30 second period, but, um, and strawberries. So that would be my ideal fruit and veggies, but I love your pot idea. And this is a great Christmas gift if you had like a Thai pot, so then you can kind of put, or like even like a Asian an pot. Asian pot, you put, you know, the things that you would use in those rice paper rolls. You know, you'd have chili with some mint and some coriander and some basil, and then give that as a gift, and then they can make their Thai dish from that one pot. Have the hero plant either a tomato or a chili or whatever in the middle. Mm. Um, Black lotus. This is a uh, without notice. Black lotus. Um, Seed oils, what's mm. your opinion, good or bad? Oh, look, I, I just love extra virgin olive oil. I think if you can get that, it is cold pressed. It means it hasn't been heated. Look, I know rice bran oils, because I, I do see a lot of people with um, food chemical intolerances and a lot of the seed oils like your rice bran, sunflower, safflower oils and canola oils are very, very low in, in food chemicals that can affect a very small portion of our population. Um, and also rice bran oil is touted to sort of have a very high um, burn and flash point, which means it, it can tolerate much higher sort of burning. But I'm just, I'm so invested in an olive and an olive oil. And you can actually flash fry with olive oil. It won't actually sort of do any destruction to the oil itself. So yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I guess after 32 years, you kind of get your favourites, and I've 
I know people like using some of, the, some of the seeded oils, but I just can't go past my olive oil. Okay, cool. Can I grow sweet potatoes in a greenhouse? Yeah, you can. If you're in a cooler climate, um, for sure. Have, have a go at it. I know people uh, that are growing sweet potato in, in temperate and cool climates. Um, some of them not even in greenhouses. So you might have to do a fair bit of research. You might have to build a good greenhouse. You might have to maybe even uh, do a little heating, some heat mats here or there. But it's definitely possible. And like, I definitely like growing things that I'm not allowed to grow or, not, or that I shouldn't. Like I grow olives here. The last time our olive trees fruited were 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, in any extent. And we got 10 kilograms of olives out of them. And it, uh, while I prune the olives back quite a bit um, so that they don't overshade other good trees that are producing, I still keep them. And actually this year they've flowered quite profusely. So we should get a couple of or more kilos of olives out of them. So just because you can't or you shouldn't doesn't mean you can't give it a go. There are plenty of people growing things all around the world that they shouldn't be and it's just great fun mm. and it's very satisfying when you actually get something out of it. Mm. Mm. And look, if you, can, if you can press one of your olives and provide yourself with a little tiny bit of olive oil, that will be a, like a, an achievement in itself. Well, what about just olive leaves? Say so I can't get olives, I'm having an olive tea. Yeah, oh, olive, the olive leaves. So there's a company here in Australia called Cobham Estate and they have millions and millions of trees um, out like in Victoria. And they actually, they've now produced a tea and it's like a, uh, an immune boosting tea and they're using the olive leaves. And it's, it's beautiful, the, the smell, the texture. I'm sure you can actually use that in a tonic as well. So we're, we're now starting to go beyond the fruit and look at the leaves and the stems. And you know, you, it's the same with things like coriander. You've got the leaf, but actually the stem is often more powerful and tastier as well. So. My sister is growing macadamias in the Adelaide Hills, which is like an alpine climate. And she just said, I was told never to plant a macadamia tree in the hills like you keep it in South Australia. This tree would be oh, maybe eight foot tall and has an enormous amount of macadamias. I've actually put a couple of things up on my Facebook. My little niece and I were sort of cracking the macadamias and they're juicy and they're soft. And who would have ever known that they couldn't grow in Adelaide or in South Australia? So um, I forget who it was. Someone asked, "What did you eat yesterday for breakfast, lunch, and dinner?" <laughs> Into the okay. So for breakfast, I had um, a piece of green toast, two eggs, some tomato toast because the eggs with the iron, you need the tomato vitamin C to unlock that. Morning tea, I've got a yogurt, and it's a, like I'm not going to mention names and things, but yogurt with some granola and some chia seeds in it. For lunch, I had a salad that had tuna, because um, I love tuna. It's getting very personal. I know, it? it's all right, but do you know what? I'm an open book. I'm very, cool. like, you know, I was going to say, I will expose what I actually eat, but I won't talk about exposing. Um, so, and had tuna and beans and some lemon juice over the top. What did we have for dinner last night? Because actually, I was working all afternoon, and last night's dinner, oh, my husband made a, he calls it the impossible quiche. So it's kind of that Thursday night, whatever's left over so there was capsicum there was corn that we've used during the week there was some eggs some uh, olives some feta cheese and then I had two pieces of chocolate coated dark chocolate coated ginger and a herbal tea for um, uh, afterwards and then I was in bed by quarter nine because I'm old and I get tired but the Hermit says um, is there any What's your opinion on the rumours surrounding unfermented soy? I haven't heard any of this. No. Unfermented no. soy rumours. I, I will. I love when people ask me questions that I don't know because I certainly don't know a, a lot. And yeah. but I'll, I'll look into that. Okay. We'll have a look at that. And Good. yeah, when Kate's back next time, maybe we can cover that. Yep. A but little bit. Fermented soy, like fermented foods, like the the Japanese love their fermented foods, and they you know their their gut health is sort of you know streets ahead of a lot of um you know the western countries um gut health as well what's and, what's um kay j said what sort of nutrition do you get from eggplant do you know eggplant again eggplant like the zucchinis like the squash 
um, because it's purple, like you're going to get more antioxidants in That's there. The and fiber, yeah. As well. yeah. You should eat the skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it can't hurt you. Yeah, yeah. and the inside, um, so fiber, it's a high water content. Um, a lot of veggies, you know, they do sort of ha contain the same sort of stuff, but it's just so nice to use vegetables sort of in place of some things like pastas. Like I make a rocking moussaka. Again, a lot of this is from my grandmother and my mother's um, mother and my, my husband's um, Italian sort of side. Um, and also I lived with a Greek family when I was going through uni. And big chunky pieces of eggplant that you salt off, leave that for a while, wash off and use them like pasta pieces. Um, in between your mints and your tomatoes, it's just beautiful. And you know, if you expose children to this kind of eating and, and um, you know, people exposing their palates, this they'll get used to a lot more vegetable within their meals. Tennis wants to wants to know: Do you think extra virgin olive oil is better to cook with and better to use, or what's your opinion on that? Yeah, look. I have, if you go onto the Cobram Estate site, um, you will find their statement that says you can cook with extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is usually, and that, that first press is like deep green, um, it's pungent, it's also, it's mustardy, it's got like a spice to it, it's beautiful if you're just even having a couple of drops on your tongue. And it just, um, you can cook with, in our, in our domestic kitchens, we're never going to get that temperature so high that we start to cause problems with like high temperatures with some of the oils. So I cook with it all the time. We stir fry with it, we barbecue with it, you put it over the top of like your salad just as a raw neat um, and use it in sauces. So you know I am I am a bit of an olive oil and extra virgin but you know whatever whatever you're in your budget you know but again olive oil is my, my pick and that's just my opinion though. And Zephyr wants to know what's your favourite overall superfood if you've got one. Oh gosh, that's hard. We were asked at a conference once, like, if you were on a um, desert island, what three foods would you take? And I said tomatoes, because vitamin C, fibre, antioxidants, they're very easy to grow. Avocados, because there's your oil, and that's your monounsaturated fat, and they taste yeah. really beautiful. Eggs, because that's your protein that you can use. It's also an emulsifier, so it mixes with sauces. That's three, and then one more, I'd probably do like, you know, some sort of um, salmon with you. You need some omega threes. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, there's your For your brain sauce. and everything. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Trying okay. To, trying to cover those off. I mean, and probably you need a fruit somewhere in there as well. That's that's not just the tomato. So maybe like an orange or a mandarin that's got a little bit of like you know sweetness that you can. And you can actually have juice as well. And you can have juices with it. But it's variety. very tiny. Not blueberries. Oh. See now I'm now into number five. I can't <laughs> choose yet. I probably do. Can I can I drop the family members and take one more extra fruit or vegetable? Yeah. <laughs> but I have to take my dog. So yeah. So. Um, and then there was. Um, can we have Kate's social media links? Uh, so, what I'll do is mm -hmm. I'll put links, all your links and everything, at the bottom of this video. I haven't got them there right yet, right now, but I will put them underneath there. I'll pin them to the top of the comment section and I'll put them in the description below. Mm. So I'll get them off you later. Yep. Um, so I can't give them to you now, but Kate, can you, have you got any? Yeah, just if you Google Kate DePrima APD, so just K-A-T-E-D-I-P-R-I-M-A-A-P-D, that'll bring you Facebook. But it's also my, my personal one because I've got nothing to hide. Um, and then I've got Twitter, which is not Twitter now, it's now X. Um, so you can find me that way. But gee, that's nice to hear because I thought we might be in the opposite where they go, oh, who's she? She sucked. <laughs> Get rid of her. <laughs> no, no, no way. I was, I was going to say a really, um, your explanations were just superb. Oh, I'm so you, um, happy that had, I know the, the buffering in the wind has annoyed me. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it's probably annoyed a few people out there. We'll get that fixed up. But in the main, the wind's dropped off for us and I think the audio is pretty good. Seems like people are having a lot of fun in the comment section and they're right into it. And But uh, your explanations, are just, I'm just in amazement at how well, I just feel like I'm a client sitting <laughs> talking to you um, and <clears throat> you're just coming up with all this stuff and I tried to box you in deliberately because you were so good and you smashed me. But the, I know one thing, IT, you know, uh, design or whatever, no. 
but so mm. yeah but i made it that one time you know it's mm. the one thing so you know there's all that experience and well you exactly. know so yeah. um yeah we'll we will put all the links that we can down below for kate and Kate, uh, well, hopefully you'll come back again. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. So, you know, yeah. if you'll have me, I'll, I'm here. Oh, that'd be great because um, we can pick, you know, some more parts of the garden and talk about different subjects. Mm. Um, I just think it's really interesting. I thoroughly enjoyed myself today. So thanks a lot. Thank you. And can I do it? What? We got into it. <laughs> we got into it. So, yeah, I think that that's a wrap. Um, if you want, head over to my forum. Uh, where Mandy is uh, is running things. Um, I'll try to get over there. I must admit I'm not over there a lot, but um, I'll try to get over there and see if I can answer some questions there as well. Um, I'll go through the comments as, uh, and try my best to answer some of those comments as well, post, um, and any super chats and that type of thing as well. But um, thanks a lot. We'll call it a day. I appreciate you tuning in, even with the helicopters and the planes and the wind. And... Uh, We'll uh, catch you next time. Cheers. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Kate. Are you off now? No, we're not off. <laughs> it won't let me stop.